The title of this talk is Some Comments in Response to an Invitation from David Sherman. I want to thank the chairman and the ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you find the talk then to be of interest. I am pleased and honored by the invitation from David Sherman to share the time allotted to his keynote address on DEA. I only wish I could be in London so I could visit with Robert and Dorothy Dyson and my other many other friends there. Unfortunately, my 94 years of age makes it impossible for me to travel, hence I can only express my regret. David has asked me to address the following three questions. How did DEA, that is data envelopment analysis, originate? How has it been used and developed? And three, where should it be going? Turning to the first question, I should say that DEA originated when Eduardo Rhodes bought me a copy of a then little known article by M.J. Farrell, published in the Journal of the Royal Statistical Society in 1959 in Series A, with the title, The Measurement of Productive Efficiency. This article attempted to deal with shortcomings in the usual index number approach to productivity measurement. Although the example used by Farrell was confined to one output, he clearly had in mind extensions to multiple outputs and inputs without requiring predetermined weight as in customary index numbers en route to a satisfactory measure of productive efficiency. Ed Rhodes, who is now the Vice Chancellor of the University of Indiana, had been working on a PhD thesis at Carnegie Mellon University School of Urban and Public Affairs. This thesis was related to work he had been doing with Apt Associates, a Boston-based consulting firm which had been retained by the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare to analyze program follow-through. This involved data from a huge statistically designed experiment costing in excess of $1 billion to determine how to extend program Head Start in its attempt to improve the education of disadvantaged children, mainly black children. I should pause perhaps to say that Barack Obama, the current presidential candidate for the Democratic Party in the United States, uh, credits his start to this program Head Start, which uh, program, uh, to program Head Start, to which program follow through was supposed to follow. All of the statistical methods Rose used had based on these data yielded unsatisfactory results, so I turned to the work by Farrell to see what could be done from that source. Farrell had tried to deal with the multiple input, multiple output problem by using elements from economic theory. I turned instead to linear programming and invited my longtime associate, Professor Abraham Charns, to join us. This led to the 1978 article which is entitled Measuring the Efficiency of Decision-Making Unit, which was published in the European Journal of, uh, of Operational Research by Charns, Cooper, and Rhodes. This article made it possible to deal with the problem stated by Farrell and greatly, greatly extended its powers. For instance, the duality theory of linear programming made it possible to show how DEA could be used to determine the best possible weights, that is, the weights used to determine the efficiency scores, without requiring any recourse to pre predetermined ways. Some idea of the results of our efforts may be effort ascertained by reference to the article by Amruznajat, Parker, and Tavares, which has now recently appeared in Socioeconomic Planning Sciences 208. The article is entitled Evaluation of Research in Efficiency and Productivity, a 30-year survey of the scholarly literature in DEA from 1978 to 2008. It lists more than 4,600 articles, books, monographs, and so forth by more than 4,200 authors dealing with uses of DEA on a great variety of problems in more than 42 countries. I now turn to the second question. How has DEA been used and developed? As has just been noticed, DEA has been used and developed in a great variety of applications. These applications have led to many extensions and further developments in DEA, which have led to new applications and new developments, and so on. This can be illustrated by the original application to program follow-through. It can be found in Rhodes' thesis at Carnegie Mellon University. As already noted, program follow-through took the form of a statistically designed experiment that assigned different schools to different educational programs 
to see which programs were best. This raised the question of management, since a good program can be madly managed and vice versa, so that a good program may look bad and a bad program may look better than it is. To resolve this problem, all schools were raised to the most efficient performance that their program allowed. This was accomplished by projecting each school onto the efficiency frontier associated with the program. This made it possible to evaluate the programs relative to each other. It also provided a previously unavailable method to evaluate short-run versus long-run behavior and to do so without requiring specification in the, of the time periods involved, as in comparative economic statics. For an example, see Brockett, Cooper, Lesden, and Parker in an article entitled Anticipating the Consequences of School Reform, a New Use of DEA, which appeared in Socioeconomic Planning Sciences, 39, in 2005. This completes our discussion of Sherman's three questions by noting that this discussion illustrates the interaction between theory and applications that have guided and should continue to guide the development of DEA. I now say goodbye, and I hope you find that what I have to say is of some interest. Good wishes and good luck to all of you. Thank you.